told me a message today that I must tell you. He's going to fight for you. <laughs> that is your message today. Tell Hello, them, go when you reach a place, you will see people being affected. You, you will see others will look at you somehow. Not, not, not because you are smelling something. Because there's a force that is coming from you. People that you are working with won't understand you. Even when you are quiet, because when you are there, God is beating them. Sometimes you question why some people are not speaking with you. There's a fight of God that is going on. This week you will see the results. You are about to see that God has been fighting for you. Are you ready to hear the scriptures? Let's read from the scriptures. Tell your neighbor and say, God is fighting for me. God is fighting for me. You, you are about to laugh. You know, there's a scripture of First Peter 5, verse 7. verse 7. I just want to read that scripture so that we understand the fight. Casting all your cares, meaning all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest, deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Did you hear that verse? Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, there's something that has attracted me from that verse. It says, with deepest affection, deepest affection. He watches over you very carefully. Very carefully he is watching over you. Can you see why God has to fight for you? This love that is heavy about your life and about you, about your, your, your passion, your assignment. God really loves you. He watches carefully. Sometimes we need to check what is it that you are doing alone that cannot discipline God. The reasons why he watches you carefully because you have got many enemies. You have many enemies. Others want to kill you. Others want to stop you. They want to cage you. Some challenges you are going through. The challenges you are going through. Are coming from them. Are coming from them. But he knows them. Because he is watching you carefully. When you reach among them, is you are in his eyes. I don't know if you're hearing that. So I said, God is watching you carefully. So you don't need to have fear. So I want to have fear. You know, I was looking at this verse. When God say he will start to fight for his children. I began to think about whoever touched you negatively. That person is in danger. Sometimes you don't need to fight back. Because remember that he's watching. It's as if there's someone who's writing. About your 
about whatever that is happening around you. So we have response. So I'm reading these verses here. And I realize that God is with us. He's about to fight you. Fight for you. God is about to fight for you. And he has been fighting for you. But you will see victory this week. You will see victory this week. I don't know if you are hearing me. You will see victory this week. Look at this verse. When we read Exodus 14, we read Exodus 14. We know God has been fighting for his people. If he did, to them you also do that for you. Read from verse 1. Exodus 14. Exodus 14 verse 1. Yes. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, tell the sons of Israel to turn back and camp in front of Pai Airoth between Migdol and the sea. You shall camp in front of Baal Sepho, opposite it, by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of, of the Israelites, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Can you hear that? Read. I will harden, meaning make stubborn, defiant Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them. And I will be glorified and honored through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know without any doubt and acknowledge that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart toward the people. And they said, what is this that we have done? We have let Israel go from serving us. So Pharaoh harnessed horses to his war chariots for battling and took his army with him. And he took 600 chosen war chariots and all the other war chariots of Egypt with fighting charioteers. Over all of them, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites as they were living confidently and defiantly. The Egyptians chased them with all the horses and war chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and they overtook them as they camped by the sea beside Pi Hiroth in front of Baal Zippon. Pharaoh approached the Israelites, looked up and saw the Egyptians marching after them. And they were very frightened. So the Israelites cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What is this that you have done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians as slaves than to die in the wilderness. Then Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, take your stand be firm and confident and undismayed and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. For those Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. Stop there. Can you hear that? Amen. I want us to read this. We are serving the same God. Always when you read about Egyptians, Egyptians represent people of the world. I mean, Israelites represent the chosen. We are the chosen ones. We are the chosen ones. 
So the Egyptians will pursue us. Egyptians are behind you. And devil also, Pharaoh is devil. Pharaoh is devil. Pharaoh is devil. Pharaoh is Satan. Look what happened here. The first thing that happened was the Israelites are bound, were bound to die as slaves. This was not a plan of God. Remember Jeremiah 29 verse 11. God is having his own plan God plan God had a plan. He had a future hopes for them. But when he saved them, they wanted to pursue and to bring them back. Not to kill them, but to make them to live as slaves. I want to tell you something today. The devil doesn't want to kill you. He wanted to make you to live as slaves. He wants you to suffer. He wants to make you to be a poor person. He wants you to die crying. I don't know if you hear me. You are not supposed to live your life. You are supposed to cry. Satan wants you to be like that. One day I was sitting with another person who was a witch. That person told me a story. Oh, no, 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 you know, we just touched them sometimes. When they cry, it's our entertainment. We are enjoying ourselves. So from there we touch someone. That person cry, we begin to rejoice. Because when that person is crying, you cannot praise God. You have to worry about what is going on. And the same applies to what happened to Israel. The Bible says when they moved out, they were so afraid that they were going to die. The Bible says when they moved out, they were going to die. The Egyptians began to fall. They came to their senses. They don't understand how they escaped. Listen, when you are a Christian, the devil doesn't understand how you escape. He can trap you there, but he will escape. Because he fights for you. He questions, okay, you will never get this guy to get you. He blocks somewhere so that he must not move forward. So now God was fighting for them. They escaped. And when they escaped, in the Egyptians' minds, they were not understanding how. When their senses came, they said, we cannot leave that person. Let's follow them. And the Bible says they follow. But the problem is when they, the Israelites, when they look back, they see the Egyptians are coming. They wanted to kill themselves. They say it's better we died there. But listen to what Moses was saying. Which is I'm here to tell you. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Remain calm. Just remain calm. God is about to fight for you. You know, if you know that there's someone who's going to fight for you, you will remain calm. Because it's not you fighting. Someone is going to fight. You'll be watching the fight. When God is fighting for you. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen to this. It's as good as you are, you are you, you are a 
client of a certain lawyer. And you are watching TV. And there's a case. And you see a lawyer fighting for we you. We are hearing everything. We are hearing the, the negative. We are hearing the positive. And you are watching. I'm here to tell you. You are about to watch a fight. Where the Lord. God fighting for you. You will watch people being defeated. And you will come out being tricked. You will come out with victory. There's another scripture I was telling people. That has really touched me. We normally quote it. But with amplified. This is Isaiah 54:17. Isaiah 54, 17. It talks about the four benefits. Can you just read there? Isaiah 54. Yes, Isaiah 54. Verse 17. Look at the benefits. Verse 17. Are there. There. It says what? Uh -huh. No weapon uh -huh. that is formed against you mm. will succeed. We know that. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. We saw that. This meaning peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Did you hear that? Amen. Read again, peace. It is this, and uh, say peace, peace righteousness, righteousness, security, security and, triumph and triumph over opposition. Over opposition. Is the heritage of the servants what of the God Lord. God want to give you. God wants to give you peace, righteousness, security, and triumph over opposers. He wants to fight for you to extend that your opposers will be defeated. God wants, uh, we want to defeat your opposers. There is security, there is peace, there is peace that will be in your heart. Listen, no Normally we talk about no weapon formed that is no, The weapon will be formed. But, but you'll, you'll be having peace. I don't know if you're hearing me. They will come one way. They will run seven ways. Even when they come in the night. To eat us up. You know what they do? They will stumble and fall. I'm talking about the I'm here to speak against the opposers. That your opposers, your enemies, will be defeated in front of your eyes. Victory will be your portion. Success will be a game of your day. Because God is with you. He's about to fight for you. When I look at this, I say, if God of Moses can do this. My God can do the same. For my people. I want to see your enemy falling. I want to see your enemy uh, I don't know if you are hearing me. Do you, you understand? The reasons why today some of you are praying now is because of these people that devil is using. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Because you are trying to change the situation that was brought by someone. But can I tell you this? You are, you are about to pray. Pray with peace. Not even try to change the situation. Because the situation is about to be changed right now. It's about to be changed right now. I don't know if you're hearing me. When I was reading this, I said, God of Moses is my God. I don't know if you're hearing me. God of Moses is the God of Charis. It's the same God that opened a way where there is no way. He's about to open a way where there is no way. Some of you you are here. You are disappointed. I see God fighting for you. I see God fighting for you. I, I don't know how I can tell you this. I just, I'm going to read the scripture, but I want to tell you. In fact, I'm prophesying you. I'm prophesying you. God is fighting for you. 
I said, God is fighting for you. Listen to this. The fight that is there, mm. when it's finished, there will be no trace that you fought. Because it's not you fighting. It's God fighting. I don't know if you are here. I mean, have you found that this God will normally do this? When, when he says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego enter fire, when they come out, there was no smell of fire. This week, when you come out, there was no smell of fire. I don't know if you hear him. There will be no sign that you went, you went through your problem. There will be no sign that you were challenged before. There will be no sign that you were sick before. There will be no sign that you will be opposed before. I see victory in your life in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Me, I'm seeing victory right now. In fact, I wanted to stop and talk about victory. Because God is fighting for you. I see your enemies being sick. The sickness you are having. I see your enemies falling down facing what you are facing. I don't know how it came to it was directed. The arrow that was directed to you will turn back to your enemy. I don't know if you are hearing me. I said the leg that was directed to you will turn back to your enemy. In fact, I'm prophesying you. I'm prophesying you. Whoever thinks you will die will die. Whoever Psalm 27, verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Although my father and my mother have abandoned me, uh -huh. yet the Lord will take me up, meaning adopt me as his child. Did you hear that verse? Carry on, mom. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me on a level path. Because of my enemies who lie in wait. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have come against me. They breathe out violence. I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for and confidently expect the Lord... Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Did you hear that verse? Eh? Mm. I would have despair <laughs> if I didn't know this God. Because what you are going through can make you to forget how God works. Can you just read that verse 10, Mama? Read verse 10. Read verse 10. Uh -huh. Although my mother and my, sorry, my father and my mother have abandoned me, mm. yet the Lord will take me up, meaning adopt me as his child. Did you hear that verse? Because can still happen in the house where you can be rejected. The fight is not only outside. You can be abandoned by people you love. When people leave you, God will direct you. I said, when people leave you, How listen, when your friends leave you, celebrate. When your family leave you, celebrate. Look at your 
Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11 again. Yari, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. Because of my enemies who lie in wait. Your enemies are waiting for your mistake. Your enemies are waiting for simple things. Any small thing. A slight thing. God will fight for you. I said God will fight for you. They lie in wait. When they put a trap. You just find yourself falling. When I know the taller wheel. Some of you, when you do business, Baba wale wale lika the business. Because they lie in wait. Kau revali tila na mola. You find everything is collapsing. Uno taller di lo di wela. Resurrect it again. Eh, you know we are up there. Yeah, wela fasi up there. Listen, they are about to be exposed. Ba kau filu chola pepe de. They are about to be exposed. Ba kau filu chola pepe de. You are fighting an enemy you don't know. Ulu wale le na wale usali tivi. Don't worry. Tivi la. Stop fighting. Tu wela ulu ana. Remain calm. Do la udu di shi. Allow God to fight. Tu mela mo di mo abaya na wau. Have you ever find that there are people who are just coming closer to you? Not because they want anything. But they want to find how they can pull you down. Today I'm talking about people. I might be talking about you. Today you will be exposed. I'm about to 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 be exposed. This is the time that you leave other people's stories and look at your own stories. This is the time that you allow God to bring your life back. Satan has stolen your life. You need your life back. God is about to fight for you. Can I tell you this? When you are here, do you know that you can be followed in church? We are about to go to church. Some people are following in church. You think all people are Christians? I have followed you here. I said they lie in wait. But they will be exposed. It's only when you are doing something. You begin to hear it somewhere. You question how it went that side. I'm here to tell you that God is about to fight for you. I said God is about to fight for you. I said God is Someone was sent me, one of my sons. He, he sent me a message and said, Men of God, you went through a lot. Me, I don't want to disappoint you. He was telling me that I said, I ah, no. I answer him and says, What you wrote here is a joke. Is it? But I wrote it. You, you wrote a joke. You wrote a joke. Because I know whom I'm serving. When the person tries to fight me, because I know whom I'm serving. Because the person tries to fight me, because I know whom I'm serving. 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 Because I know whom I'm I was really shocked by this. Proverbs 25. Yeah, 25. 21 to 22. Verse 22. It says, If your enemy is hungry, uh -huh. give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. And the Lord will reward you. Did you hear that verse? Do you know what is coals? That's what I'm saying. No, Malasha. Malasha. You know Malasha? Yeah, it's about Malasha. When your enemy is hungry, give him food. 
Mitsuri kita la ufadijo. Hmm. When you give him food, you are putting coals. Ujia mashalo bea. Yes. Undi mato. When the enemy is eating food, le nabali ija. The coals is malasha. You hear that? Awo di mato. Who put the coals there? Kima ngabe ileng odi mato. Is God. Kimo di. Go who put coals. Mo di mota bea malasha. Wait, wait. Prepare a good breakfast for your enemy. When, when, when your enemy says, hmm, God lights a matches. And, and we say, yeah. <laughs> when the hairs are burning, when the enemy says, hmm, he doesn't know I hate him. He doesn't know I hate him. Yeah, I'm going to speak against that person. I'm going to speak against that person. God put a call. When the enemy is shallow, another call. Masala na melana, ana melana. How many shall? If you shall fifteen times, how who fifteen? Look, there are fifteen. Levelang, masala i fifteen odi ma to. That are burning on top of your head. Soon you'll be disfigured. Soon you'll be dead. Isi khale na uta shala usabona alugi we na ma. Soon you'll be dead. Isi khalo uta ba ushile. Listen to this. Chele changwa ish. God is fighting for someone. Mudi mo luane la mutu mo ngemo. The Bible says. Bible ya papa iri. God will reward you. Mudi mo ta upuza. You know why? Because he's watching. He knows this person is your enemy. Sometimes they come to ask things just to test if you know. To test if you know what they are doing. I don't know if you're hearing me. Don't count them sins. Give them what they want. I don't know if you're hearing me. Stop fighting for yourself. Allow God to fight for you. I don't know if you're hearing me. How many of you are going to do that? You heard stories. But you carry on blessing. God will reward you. I don't know if you're hearing me. How can you survive? When there are coals on top of your head. You know, you know I'm expecting something. I'm expecting a migraine. I'm expecting madness. Because it's only you will be feeling the fire. I'm expecting someone to confess. That you know, since I ate the food, I feel I have to tell you the truth. We had a plan to kill you. I'm very sorry. I don't know if I I see God fighting for you. 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 And he will fight for you. Are you ready to see the hand of God? Let's read this verse. Deuteronomy 20. Let's read from verse 4. Verse 4. <coughs> yes. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. The officers shall also speak to the soldiers, saying, What man is there who has built a new house and has not yet dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle and another man would do dedicate it. Carry on, Regina. What man has planted a vineyard and has not put it to use, meaning harvesting its fruits? Let him go and return to his house, otherwise he might die in the battle and another man will begin to use its fruits. And who is the man who is engaged, meaning legally promised to a woman, and has not married her, let him go and return to his house. Otherwise, 
He might die in the battle and another man would marry her. Then the officers shall speak further to the soldiers and say, Who is the man who is afraid and lacks courage? Let him go and return to his house so that he does not cause his brother's courage to fail like his own. And it shall be when the officers has finished speaking to the soldiers, they shall appoint commanders of armies over them. When you advance to a city to fight against it, against it you shall first offer it terms of peace. If that city accepts your terms of peace and opens its gates to you, then all the people who are found in it shall become your forced labor and shall save you. Stop there, ma'am. I want us to understand what we are reading here. I was learning how God fight for his people. God was telling the Israelites, if you are going to fight your enemy, and you still have engagements that you feel you have not finished them. They can affect your courage. It's better you go back and fix them. Those who have courage without being affected. Those are the ones that God can fight for. Listen to this. If you want God to fight for you, develop a courage. I don't know if you hear me. You need to have courage. God cannot do anything to discourage servant. Do you know that God cannot use me when I'm discouraged? God also cannot bless you when you're discouraged. This is the reason that God said to Joshua. Be courageous. Be courageous. If you are courageous, no man will never be able to stand before you. When you are courageous, I will push that man. I will make sure that you defeat every opponent. Last time I told you that me, I used to do that when I'm awake, but mm. don't do it. Mm. If you are afraid to lose a job. Because after I realized that God wanted me to lose a job. I don't know if you are afraid to lose a job. I don't know if you are afraid to lose a job. I become radical. Just radical. Sometimes you people, you must know that God want to fight for you. The courage to extend that you face opposers. Here God was saying, if you want to fight, go out. Have courage. But this courage is not only in the physical. It must be also inside you. I wish there are people who are waking, they can go there if you are they are denying position. You approach the manager. As a manager. Do you know that I kill people? No. <laughs> you, I love you so much. I don't want to kill you. I just need promotion. <laughs> and after you finish that, you tell. Do you know that manager will make sure that you get promotion? Because the courage you have, the courage you have can make you to stand and talk what you can say. You know the way you people you are afraid of your managers. Sometimes these managers they are crying alone. They have problems. And many of them they are afraid to die. Approach your manager this week. Approach your manager. There's a manager. 
for the woman in jail. Uh, before mm. somewhere when I was working somewhere. God promised me you get a job. But but what I'm doing is not what God has promised. But there's something that I have here. I don't want to tell you because it will happen. You must promote me. <laughs> it was very promoted. And it became very serious. So when are you going to promote me? If you won't promote me, you have problems. I don't want you to be sick. I don't want to be, I love you so much. I don't want to take even your position. Because I'm here, I will defend your position. No one will take your position. But promote me to work close to me. I'm just giving you a month. <laughs> You, you, I'm telling you, <laughs> that man will scratch his head. Many of them <laughs> are going <laughs> to <laughs> to <someone else. laughs> You, God is fighting for you. I don't know if you're hearing <laughs> me. I don't know if you're hearing me. <laughs> Look what happened. <laughs> Mama will tell you this thing happened. In Winnie Mandela. Go Winnie Mandela, Kwale. There was a church. You know this, it's still there. Very close to us. God told me I must go and pray. He will show me where I will put the church. The church was in my stand 1506. I went zone 5. I was with Mama. We were praying there. When we were praying, God showed me a place. It was a dustbin there. You people, you know the story. But when we were praying, I was having fasting days there. Some pastor came from Pulukwane to make a crusade very close to where I'm going to am going to I went to them. I went to them. God is fighting for you. <laughs> God is fighting. You know, we need to do that. I reached there and so said, sorry, guys. Who's the pastor? He says, it's me. I said, oh. I'm also a pastor. We shake hands. I don't know if God also told you to come and plant a church. Because God is the one who told me to plant a church. So I'm afraid that so don't care. he might also told you. If he told you, ah, that's fine, plant a church. Tata, tata. But if you plant a church and then I'm also here, planting a church, your church will die. It won't grow because God told you to come. So I don't want to have problems with Are you. Are you hearing me? He says, ah, no. We have two weeks only. After two weeks, we are going. I say, brother, I love you because we are doing God's work. So two weeks, after two weeks, we must go. Daddy fell off the Two weeks was finished. Two weeks he didn't want to go. Third week. Fourth week. I went there to plant a church. All the people who were there came to me. I approached that. I never told someone. I approached that pastor. I said, I saw your members coming to me here. I don't want them. I don't want please move from here. Move from here, you go somewhere there. God told me to come here. You and me, we are going to fight in the future. And that man says, I know the church is church is open. I cannot stop this. When we're carrying on, I don't want to tell you, it's a very painful story. That pastor died. This thing happened. And now they replaced. I never told you. They don't want to replace. They bring another. That church, if we can go to the church now, even today, that church is still very smooth. We grew up to extend that. From that time, 
Ana koyeo. We were parking cars. Ne repaka di koloyo to akereke. Very close to his own church. Raya it was very painful. One day I went that side. I was feeling so sad. But I said, as long as I've told you, as long as kwa talo sedi, there are things you need to say. Don't keep quiet. You need to speak. Send forth the word. And that word will never come back void. 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 I don't know if you're hearing me. I get the balance. You need to speak a word. That word will be your defense. To be honest, they brought another pastor. We never fought. Maybe today we never fought. But their church never grew. Because they were the ones who 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 were the Are you ready to see God fighting? Let's read another scripture. I'm not in a hurry. I just want to show you this scripture. I'm not in a hurry. Let's see. 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 Let's read two to five. Are we learning Maroma five two to five? This can be a last scripture after the very same. Let's go and learn my friend. Trust somebody say my friend. God wants to fight for you. Read that verse. In fact, I'm just choosing scriptures. You know, I get hurt from my wall because all the scriptures that I wrote here. My wall, I get angry. Let me come, come. Is for our fight to overcome. Just read that verse. Romans five, verse two to five. Through him we also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace, in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance of experiencing and enjoying the glory. Of our great God. Can you hear that? Amen. Okay. The, read again that verse. Through Him. Through Him, we also have access by faith into this, meaning remarkable state of grace, in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and this confident assurance of. Experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of His excellence and power. And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our suffering and rejoice in our hardship, knowing that the hardship, meaning distress, pressure, trouble, produces patience. Endurance. And endurance proven character, meaning spiritual maturity. And proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Such hope in God's promises never disappoints us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Who was given to us? Did you hear that? Amen. We need to know His glorious presence. And we stand firmly. Secured. Having confidence. To understand that whatever we are going through, it's a process of bringing. The results that God wants us to have. When you are going through all, God is establishing qualities in you. That you need when the blessing comes. 
There are some challenges that Satan did to you. That the enemy did to you. And God allowed them. For the sake of certain characters that you want to see in your life. And such character goes hand in hand with the certain blessing. That will manifest in your life. Sometimes I wonder what is it that I was supposed to be? Now, go check in when you put your shirt on. That's how you're aging, can. If I didn't go through all this shit, hang up a kiss or turn a car out so I can show you how to feel. I wonder what was supposed to have happened. Can you put your shirt on? That's how you're aging. I was supposed to have lost a character. Now, get that back in the page. Give me one. Let me try to tell you one of my first character I loved. Eric, let me check your home. Your mama go go right and go good. People normally buy me some clothes of names that I will never wear. And those character, I found that it has helped me a lot to associate with everyone. I don't know if you hear me. Because there are some clothes that when you wear them, everybody knows you are like this. So I, I decided to say, I don't want to wear this. So that I'll be able to associate with everyone. When God teaches you and gives you some character. It's for a certain blessing. When you're a pastor and you are not accessible, for everyone it affects your ministry. I don't know if you're hearing me. So God made me to understand so by the fire I went through to make me to understand that I must have a certain or lifestyle. And that lifestyle helps me and to associate with the big people and or the smaller I people. people. I pray that today you must not look at what you are facing as if it's a curse. It's a process. Because God is fighting for you. I see God fighting for you. Sometimes when you look at what you are facing, you ask yourself, where is God? There are things which are broken inside you. There are things which are needed where you are going. There are things that are happening in you. And those things God allowed them and for the sake of a road where God is taking you. I don't know if you are hearing it. I see God fighting for you. You can go and read Second Chronicles twenty. Chapter twenty, from twenty verse one. Twenty verse one. And Samuel said unto Eli, Look how God fought for Joseph. 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 How when he started to believe. How to make him. That all the opposers of the enemies are coming. And he said, it's better we seek God. I don't know if you're hearing that. And the Bible says, the prophet, the spirit of God came to the prophet and said, hey, do not be afraid of them. This is the message I'm giving you. I said, do not be afraid of them. You will defeat them. I say you will defeat them. You can go and see how God fought for the Israelites when they approach the enemy by the time of Moses and Joshua. Where the Bible says, God said, I was not happy with you, Moses. I'm not happy with these people because I'm the one who was supposed to fight for them. They must believe I will fight for them. I don't know if you're hearing me. And they could not believe. 
They were afraid. And God said, you, you won't enter Kenan. And these people also won't enter Kenan. But Joshua and Caleb believed on what I said. They could not see what is happening there. They believe on what I said. That I will fight for the Israelites. So they are the ones that will enter there. I'm here to tell you today, God is about to fight for you. You will enter there. I say you will enter there.